Sentient beings are numberless. We vow to help them all. Delusions are countless. We vow to see through them all. Opportunities to awaken are infinite. We vow to embrace them all. The Buddha way is endless. We vow to embody it. Happy Vesak! Happy Vesak! Woo! Um, tonight we're going to have a poetry slam in uh, celebration of Vesak. And really briefly, Vesak is actually um, noticed by the United Nations as a, an actual like worldwide holiday. So uh, what we're celebrating here is the birth, awakening, and paranirvana of the Buddha. It's, it's all encompassing. I know we did a, a Bodhi Day celebration a couple of months ago and all that, and that's all good, but you know, any reason to have a poetry slam is good enough with me. So um, that being said, uh, what we're going to do is, is go around the, uh, the Hollywood Square's Brady Bunch layout on the screen here, and um, I'm going to start out tonight with uh, one called, what, again? And it's for Wanji. It's so bright. Where am I? Oh, here again? What am I going to do about this? Hmm. May I share something with you? How may I help you? No coming, no going, it's all good. Now, as we mentioned last time, and as Scott just did, bowing is fine, but uh, finger snapping is also an appropriate response tonight. All right, so, um, Let's get rolling with the festivities to celebrate Vesak. Uh, and let's start with uh, Scott Watson coming to us from Japan. Hi. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all. I think it's the, basically the first time. Uh, I've seen uh, this uh, gentleman, Mr. Ma Maichi. I, I think I've watched a, a YouTube video with, with him about the, the Heart Sutra. Just recently, uh, which is very interesting. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I was uh, invited last when was it December to the to the Bodhi uh, uh, Poetry Slam, and I I don't think any of the present members were there at this time, right? I think all the members were were someone else. There was a fellow named Epstein. Is it Epstein or Epstein? Uh, uh, and Malintha and uh, a few others, but uh, everyone is different from today. But anyway, uh, this is, uh, I don't know if you can see the San, Santoka, 20 Santoka, uh, uh, his uh, real, real, well, his family name is Taneda, and uh, he was a, I, I, are you familiar with him? Uh, I don't know how much I should explain about him, but uh, he was a wandering, haiku, freestyle haiku poet, right, uh, uh, of the, uh, well, first half of the 20th century. And uh, I've been translating him and writing about him for, uh, well, I guess, I guess around 25 years now. Uh, so this was a, a little uh, chaplet, I guess it's called, uh, published by uh, a guy named Mark Cunia who runs Country Valley Press in Nevada. And this came out in 2016. So, and there are 20, 20 high, I'm just gonna read right through them all, okay? So, uh, uh, here we go. Gusto mounting walk off to clouds. That's considered to be his death poem, the last poem he read. Uh, cherries full bloom penitentiary. Crematory puddles cloud reflects coldly. My hat too sprung a leak. Pine branches all bowing, so be it Buddha. 
into sky, young bamboo untroubled. Crow song, I too am alone. Once dead rain on weeds. Their ashes voicelessly crossing the water. Surrounded by tea bushes, nebulous living. Higan Bana blooming, this is where I sleep. Removing my, put this on for this one, okay? <clears throat> because it contains the word casa, right? Removing my casa, getting soaked calmly. This is a, this is a casa, right? Okay. <clears throat> a good in mountains everywhere, out front a wine shop. Now I use wine shop, it's not really wine because it's made from grapes. He's talking about sake, Japanese sake, the right, often called rice wine. Okay, all right. Uh, in water cloud reflections too is a restless something. A repentant mind's blazing cluster amaryllis. A cloudy water while flowing clears. Days opening, windows open, green leaves. Water sounds today travel alone. Settled, able to die, grasses budding. Thickly clad in tattered robes, face of good fortune. And that's the end of it. Thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Finger snapping away. Finger snapping. <laughs> uh, let's move over to the next uh, square and, uh, you know, if, if you brought multiple poems, uh, you know, we can read one or two at a time and then we'll rotate around and we'll come back to you and, and all that. I'm sure Scott has more to share with us later as well. Um, so let's go to uh, Ontario and Brad. In a foggy grove of saplings, the young boy shivers alone, wandering in reverie. Time steps away from space. Body begins to hum, gazing into, into the uncanny mist over the St. Lawrence River. He is startled, suddenly seeing himself, recalling this very moment far in the future. The branches in the air bear witness, and today an elder looks at the back of his spotted hand, how like the veins of a fallen maple leaf, as he rubs palms together, moist and smooth and slippery, there appears the shiny bark of saplings, decades upstream by a river left long ago. He traces the rings of time circling the vast cove of the breast, the temporary harbor of a timeless heart. And I remember a young boy remembering me, remembering him. Okay, let's move on to uh, our friend Hey Song. I um, struggle with writing poetry, uh, but I do write lyrics. And um, this one uh, was intended for a song called Words. His spirit was unbreakable. His voice rang like a bell. His will, it was unshakable. So true that all could tell. Cry of freedom, child of light. Your words so strong, your words so right. His message was a simple one on those that sought peace out. And when all was really said and done, our fears were born in doubt. Cry of freedom, child of light, your words so strong, your words so right. In time we saw how right he was, for now we live in shame. Kill them all with kindness and love, 
care not for who's to blame. Cry of freedom, child of light, your words so strong, words so right. Thank you, Hazel. Um, I just want to remark one thing here that uh, most Vesak celebrations may be a little bit more, let's say, religious than this. <laughs> However, if you're looking for that, there's plenty of it out there and you can probably find it on the actual date of Vesak, which is May 5th this year. Um, we, however, are doing this to celebrate and we read these poems and share these poems for the sake of all beings. And with that, let's go to Reverend Minwi. Okay, so uh, in honor of Vesak, can you guys hear me okay? We're okay. Uh, so in honor of Vesak, I actually wrote a poem and I call it Further Along Sid's Road Less Traveled. Um, Sid is my man. So, you know, people always say in the Christian religion, you got to have a personal relationship with Christ. Well, as a Buddhist, I feel like I have to have a personal relationship with Sid. So, uh, Siddhartha is my guy, Sid is his name to me, and so this is further along Sid's road less traveled. For 16 years, I knew princely bliss, but at 16 years old, it all changed with a kiss. For the next 13 years, I learned all about tears. Suffering through marriage, it all became clear. I planned my escape, but oh, was I too late? The biggest fetter of all appeared at my gate. Still, I ran to the river and chopped off my hair, thought never again to succumb to that pit viper's snare. By donning a robe of ochre, I swore to set foot in Mara's house no more. Six years on the path, I learned to breathe deeply, no more sex, drugs, or rock and roll in a manner of speaking. Yoga and Zen, it all merged in my mind, but I knew in my heart there was still more to find. Mangoes are tasty, but hurt when they fall. So I searched through the trees and examined them all. That ficus was big and tall and round. So I pledged not to arise till my mind fully unwound. Some presume that it took me full 49 days, but in just one night, my mind broke through the haze. Mara tested me with thoughts of great pleasure and pain, seeking to prevent the great wakening that came. I had sorted it out, all that delusion and greed, no self was left, all impermanent indeed. But those seven weeks in Bodhgaya I stayed, I had found my nirvana no longer dismayed. Thus began my 45 year long mission, teaching liberation and peace to all who would listen. True self is no self, let it all go. Compa compassion is present in, oh, sorry. True self is no self, let go of it all. Compassion is present in both big and small. Aged 80, it seems, is a good round number after all my two buddies had gone on to slumber. This life was my last, the war had been won. My samsara ended with my last setting sun. So thank you. Now let's move on to Russell. Now that I have the mic on. These are more like poetic prose, but we'll see. Maybe it's just free form. It matters. Cold winds blow dead leaves across the lifeless road into an open meadow. And I think ripples on a pond widen in perfect circles, ever expanding, pure, and yet without volition. And I think the sounds of birds fill the air as they migrate southward, emptying the sky even as they fill it. And I think snow will blow rivulets of white across this road, mindless and lifeless, though through the meadow and over the pond, I think. It will fall from an empty sky, birds long gone and still, I think. Time itself marches on, birthing and killing as it goes, wandering aimlessly forward, relentlessly in its own migration, unstoppable and lifeless, and yet I think. 
They think about how time does not wait for us. It cannot. About how the world is filled with life moving on with us or without us. Independent of our wants or wishes, our dreams, our passions, indifference to our delights and our suffering. In time, we will be lost in time. All trace erased since generations past. The aging of the earth, the death of the sun, the passing of the galaxy, the dissolution of the fabric of the universe. So if, when we are gone, that we live matters not, then let us matter now in life as participants so that we make our marks while our blood runs hot and our resolves seem cold. It will not matter after us. Let it matter to us. Let us matter for ourselves. Grains of sand do make a beach. Drops of rain make a storm rage. Snowflakes swallow the land for a season. The wind itself is only agitated gas. Do we deserve less than this? We can be more than our makeup. We should stand for more than random decisions. We are alive. Let us act alive, not wasting time, not passing the chance to live, let our lives shine in the dead expanse of lifeless time. We are choosers, we live, but our life and our volition bear record. Moving on, <laughs> let's head to Washington, D.C. and our Dharma brother, Robert Coho Epstein. Thank you, Unsan. <laughs> My cat says, mm. um, that was a short poem, but thank you, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> I have what another one. Say? That's what I want to know. <laughs> that was good. Okay. The great mirror reflects everything. Nothing is omitted. The universe is a mirror. I am a reflection. I may want to pick and choose what things in the mirror I like or dislike, change or dissect the mirror, but the whole with all of its connections makes up the whole me. There are no gaps. I try to control, I try to grasp, I am out of control, time is out of control. I always feel like I am out of time. The great mirror is relentless. It goes everywhere like water or mercury. As a mirror, everything is always already accomplished. I always want to alter at least slightly the way it is, but in a flowing river, the mirror, when I try to put my hand in, it just adjusts and moves around me. My life is a flowing mirror. The universe is still. The universe is in constant motion and I flow with it. Great mirror, great mirror, great mirror, which reflects the light of life. Excellent. Let's move into Pennsylvania and our Dharma brother with the safety vest on, it looks like. <laughs> brother Hengdahl. Greetings from Pittsburgh. As a Zen priest, I light candles and incense and then bow in a most proper way before continuing to be a fool. Um, do you have another one? Are you going to have to uh, run off? Um, sure. Uh, some, some recent ones. Looking for something which cannot be found, wandering aimlessly, rain soaking the earth. Source and stream are not different. Flowing is simply what flows. Try to stop it. It moves on. Try to find it. It is gone. All right. Can, can my uh, daughter jump in and read one? Oh, excellent. Yes. <laughs> She's got the cat. Yeah, you wouldn't stop. <laughs> give, me the, give me the cat. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi. Oh, Emily. The present, is, it's called the present. The present moment stands at a distance, its reflection coated in metallic waste off of which sunlight bounces repeatedly, but never pierces through. Tastes of sweaty, twisted bedsheets, 
and hollow desperate promises of change. Looping, piling onto one another, the crunch of bone against bone, rubbing raw, collapsing inward to reveal, dead corpses once so flushed with the color of life, once vibrating the pleasant hum of the body sinking, the mind, and the ever shifting mood, resonating with the tune of the day. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thanks, Evan. Good to meet you, Evan. Uh, let's see. All right. So uh, I have one here. Uh, I'll do two in a row. One is mine, and uh, one is from our Dharma brother, uh, Mike Gingy Wood, out in Rhode Island. Uh, this one's called Welcome Back, Bodhidharma. Why did Bodhidharma come from the West? No mirror, no cypress tree, no dust, no tea, no bowls, no bowels stick. Pixels glow, speakers breathe in and out, scent of in incense, taste of seltzer. The cushion's a little hard today, I think. <laughs> and this one is from Mike Gingy Wood. He sent us a few of them. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for a Vesaki one. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's go with this one. It's called Untitled. Uh, what have I got under my hat? My brand new home, hidden all day like a cooling soup. <laughs> <laughs> and let's loop back around and uh, back up to uh, Sendai Japan and Scott Watson. Okay, uh, I have two short ones. Is that okay? Right. So, uh, the fact of life is the act of life, and the act of life is its art which is how words are made by breathing. Next one. There are no images to suit my idea of a life that is sane. That's why I am invisible. Thank you. Okay. You're very photogenic for someone who's invisible, though, Scott. I, I have to say that. <laughs> uh, so back to Canada and our Dharma brother, Brad. My failure is almost complete. Non-becoming is the greatest success. Being no one is the sublime ease. As the body continues its inevitable slide towards compost and dust, my name escapes me completely. My life's work, dreams on a forgotten shore. The radiance of a timeless moon dawns in the heart. I rest in the light of the unborn, untouched by the ravages of time and form just the other side of birth and death, no birth, no death. Yeah. Uh, okay, back to Hey Song. Oops. I call this one, uh, as I said before, I'm not great at poetry, but I am um, decent at writing uh, lyrics. Uh, I call this one a song of hope, and it's a bit long, but um, here it goes. So lost, yet we think we know the way. What cost is the price that we will pay? Creating war machinery simply to kill more efficiently. Fools so blind we cannot see. A world so full of animosity. Now the time has come for us to wonder. On a string, we live asunder. The time has come for us to rise above the anger, above the lies. 
and I sing to you the song of hope to show you there's a way so together we may learn to cope and live for a better day. Such hate that consumes the hearts of pure, what fate will the final fates conjure? For the children of tomorrow, will they live in sorrow? Will they have a chance to grow? Tell me what they'll come to know. Peace is such a distant word, and in these times, seldom heard. Time has come to stop the pain. We're caught up in a losing game. And I sing to you this song of hope to show you this way. So together we may learn to cope and live for a better day. But we've rehearsed the scenes and set the stage, always with false promises of some new, better age. Slowly but surely, it's getting worse. Tell me how we break this curse. And I sing to you this song of hope to show you this way so together we may learn to cope and live for a better day so lost that we think we know the way what cost is the price that we will pay okay um i'm going to throw one in here uh if i may it's called don't be uh just be don't be a Buddhist, don't be a Bodhisattva, don't be anything, don't meditate for anything, don't look for enlightenment, don't take one step, see your true nature, help all beings, be a Buddha. <laughs> and that one's for Hang Dal, actually, from a conversation we had recently. And uh, let's see, uh, let's do another Mike Gingy Wood here. Uh, it's called an hour ago, unless that's the opening line. So we'll say it that way. An hour ago, it is not quiet. Cat in the litter box, washing machine, another cycle. Anticipating the snowstorm, trying to stay awake. Not anxious, but a little bit restless. And let's pick it back up with uh, okay, so um, <clears throat> these are not my words. These are actually the words of uh, Buddha Gautama. So as you know, and as I re uh, referenced before, it was Siddhartha who sat down under that Bodhi tree. But when the Buddha awakened, on the morning of his awakening, he, he uttered this gatha. And it's translated from Pali, so it's not so clean in English, but you get the idea of what he was uttering. Through many a birth and some sorrow wondered, seeking but not finding the builder of this house. Sorrowful is repeated birth. House builder, thou art seen. Thou shalt build no house again. All thy rafters are broken. Thy ridge pole is shattered. The mind attains the unconditioned achieved is the end of craving. <laughs> and we go to our Dharma brother, Russell Kyofu Mitchell. So this one's a little mean, but it's kind of funny too. So I call it ordinary guy, like those beer commercials. <laughs> Foundering in indecision, tossed about by strife, stormy seas of endless care buffet and threaten life. Wondering what he should do, pondering in doubt, his mind is molten like hot glue, struggling for clout. He finally stretches forth in hand, his hand and grimacing grabs a stout. Another wonder he in, wonders he in pain. Or should I bid my due? Seeing he has not to gain, he grabs another brew. His life unending puzzles lie, strewn in disarray. Should he watch the football game? So many bills to pay. He settles in and crunches chips. His lazy boy he finds has tightened slightly each time he slips into its warm reclines. His eyes are failing, his hearing lost, and not a friend about. 
a beaten past of mindless cost of empty-headed doubt. Quixotic in his final days, unclear and yet resolved, his memory gone, a vacant haze, his purposes dissolved, he stands a beacon of hope for all, a wonder to explore, for those who pass the beck and call to be just something more. Wonderful. Uh, back to Robert Coho Epstein. Um, I have a, a, a little set of two short poems, uh, which I wrote a long time ago for a deceased uh, Dharma brother. And um, I'm now dedicating them to uh, Laura Haas Knox, who we've been dedicating merit to, who passed away last week. Out into the mystery, which we fully embrace with open arms. What we are and always have been, we will become. Love and light to you forever and always arisen again. And the second one, free of his body, no more aches and pains. Unlike those who go to heaven, we dissolve in the light. Is there another, did you say? Um, I have, uh, Two other short ones, I can either read them or save them for next round. What do okay, you save them. Okay. Let's, let's move on to uh, Hang Dal. What is the sound of Dharma on a loading dock? Freight banging on trailer floors, horns and backup alarms. Not so pleasing is the bell in my priest's bag but that is, after all, picking and choosing, calling with the same mind, just wake up. Justice, justice. Um, okay, I've got one, uh, another one from uh, Mike Gingy Wood here. Um, <clears throat> he calls it Zazen. When you let everything happen to you, it all exists. A gentle farce that nips the little eye on your leg. Then you sit, then you leave, and without a home, it only floats by without a mouth. Uh, okay, so now we uh, will loop around again and We'll go up to uh, Scott Watson. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, well, let's see here. Okay. Uh, this one uh, needs uh, uh, just a, a bit of a tweak of explanation. The, the final word of this poem uh, it pronounces poetry, but in the written form, it's P O E T R E E, you know, like the tree that grows out of the ground. Okay, so new green leaves, earth rooted silences, poetry. And uh, another one, uh, just to introduce it a little bit, this was uh, way back in 2011, you know, they had the, here in Japan, we had the earthquake, tsunami, and the nuclear. <laughs> accident and uh, shortly after that I got the idea to write uh, these little short uh, things based on Mother Goose and uh, I'm not you know the first person ever uh, to base uh, social socially oriented poems on on Mother Goose Mother Goose rhymes uh, there was a American poet named Laurie Niedeker. I don't know if you're familiar with her. 20th century, she lived in, uh, oh, do, 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 oh, wow, up in the Wisconsin, was it? I guess. 
uh, I don't know if you're familiar with her, Lori Niedeker. Uh, she mm -hmm. was connected with uh, the uh, group of poets called the Objectivist Poets, like a Louis Zukovsky and uh, people like that. And uh, anyway, so uh, she has a, a, a selection of poems called New Goose. Okay. And so combined with that, and uh, here we go. And they're called the Mother Nuke Rhymes instead of Mother Goose, Mother Nuke, right? So, little Jack Horner sat in a corner, eaten by nuclear pie. In his mouth went his thumb, then his lips went numb, saying, what a dead boy am I? Okay. So that, you know, I, a lot of people find this rather humorous. Uh, okay, so that's my two selection there. Thank you. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of them, but uh, anyway. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> oh, that, that was it. I thought you had a couple, sorry. Well, uh, okay. I, I have a bunch of Mother Nuke rhymes, but I mean, readily available. That was what I had readily available, right? Okay, uh, find one or two and uh, we, right, I'll look we for can more. do them uh, the next time we go around. Okay, all right. So, uh, <laughs> Let's go to Brad. Okay, so this one is entitled, most of them don't have titles. This one actually has a title, Empty Theater. On the stage of the 10,000 joys and 10,000 sorrows, all the main characters have killed themselves off. The audience leaves in disgust and demands a refund. The stage and the seats now empty, a certain grief hangs in the curtains and the stillness of the air. And the theater itself slips into the void of neither host nor guest. Yes, the show will still go on. The foolish comedies, the tragedies, the romances, all the trauma and the drama. But we already know the ending. After all, who wrote the script? Mm. Let's uh, go to a song. This one is in honor of my dad. Uh, it's called The Paradoxes and the Perception. And he actually wrote this a few years before he passed away. The paradox is in the perception. Buddha had a strong desire to reduce suffering he found in the outside world. He determined that misery is caused by men's desires. His paradox was his inability to eliminate desire in others or his own desire to do so. His aspirations became a philosophy and in many places became a religion. Buddha himself, took the next step into the real solution of misery, which he found in brotherly love. However, his followers began to worship ritual and dogmatism. I find that I have no desire to worship the religion. I can easily accept the philosophy. To recognize the ego as part of reality and the universe does not destroy the self in an attempt to preserve it. If there are gods, they are not personalized to be worshipped or idolized. As intangibles, they are naturally indifferent, or unbiased, and are representative of the Tao. Very good. Mr. Sheridan. So let's uh, go back over to our Dharma brother, Minwi Maitri. In the Theravada tradition, um, there is a vandana or an homage to the Bodhi tree. And I'm going to read that one translated into English. Seated at whose base, the teacher overcame all foes, attaining omniscience, that very Bodhi tree do I adore. These great trees of enlightenment by the Lord of the world, I too shall salute you. May there be homage to you, O great Bodhi tree. Excellent. 
Excellent. Let's uh, go back over to Russell. Two quick ones. Words. Words are the skeletons of thoughts which have passed. And we, the archaeologists, imagining how those thoughts might have looked. In a moment, a thought flashes alive. In another moment, the mind encases it in words, killing it completely, named, defined, sorted, life. Handle thoughts tenderly and leave them to grow without words to cripple them and bind them to their infant form. Fewer words, few words, just the breathing and the blossoming of an idea, boundless understanding. Moment Om. People play with the poise of past pressuring their present. Past is past when it is past. Otherwise, we harbor tendrils of past in our present. Tendrils tangle and torment, blocking our view of now. We are trapped, or are we? We let go of those elements of the past that do not matter. The color of the car we passed 785 cars ago, gone, right? The side dish that came with the meal we had 21 years ago on this day, gone too? When it no longer matters, the tendrils detangle and find their place in the past. So then, why do things matter? Things matter when we are incensed by an outcome we would not prefer. Things matter when we are enamored by an outcome through pride. Things matter when we are expecting an ideal. Things matter when we feel loss and want to leverage to gain back what was taken. The little me, holds on to an unpleasant outcome to see if there's a way to get justice. The big me can let go and it is gone. In the physical world, momentum is the tendency for things in motion to stay in motion. In a moment to moment world, living in the present, there is no past nor future. Now is now, there is no tendency, no momentum except living wholeheartedly, flowing moment to moment, and leaving no trace tendrils to tangle us up. Breathing in brings in fresh air. Breathing out releases us into the world in the moment. Om. Thank you, sir. Let's, uh, I've, I've got uh, an old one here from uh, James Kenny. Uh, Buddha came to visit. He tossed his keys in the air. I found a place to join him. And that brings us up to Robert. Hey, I'm trying to sort these out. Um, I have a few short ones, if that's OK. Uh, they're mostly haikus. This is the first one. Tiny swans of dusk hiding in the shadowed reeds, subterfuge of birds. Buds out the window, tea, dumplings, cherry blossoms, rug, TV, springtime. All right. I've got one more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this one is a Trzynaczkowicz, which is a Pol Polish poetry form of two 13 syllable lines. To lie still in a field and become like the flowers, to lie in a bed and dream of the cold, clear rivers. Thank you. And back out to Pittsburgh and Hangdahl. Hangdahl, did a truck back up over you? <laughs> Hope not. The safety vest. That was that vest. 
Uh, okay, we'll come back to him. I have one here from uh, Chelsong Prajna, and uh, it is called, uh, oh, there it is. Mind wanders, returns. It looks for answers. It thinks it knows things. Maybe it does, but it's at best, it's only partial. Put it down. No need to figure it out. Ah, there it is. <laughs> and uh, do we have Hang Doll available to us? Uh, okay. I guess we'll come back to him. Um, that brings us back to Scott Watson. Uh, okay, so I found these other uh, Mother Nuke rhymes, and so I'm going to read uh, <laughs> a few of those. Uh, this this was, you know, the the I, we were here. My family and I, we were here during this whole thing, and so. Uh, this sort of comedy was one of my ways to cope with the situation, right? Because it was, we were, you know, everybody was screaming at us to leave Japan because of the radiation was, we were, you know, like we're not all that far away. Uh, the, the American government had a, uh, uh, so how many miles away you should, they, they advised us to flee. And the American government's recommendation are different from the Japanese government's recommendation, but anyway, we stayed. Uh, but, you know, one way of coping was these uh, mother nuke rhymes. So here we go. Uh, ba ba ghost sheep, have you any wool? Yes, sir, yes, sir. 50 nukes full. Some for my master, some for my dame and some to make bombs because we're insane. <laughs> and uh, here's another one. Uh, Fuclear nuclear had a great spill. All that's left is not to till. All the scientists and homeless men can't fix one nuke, start others again. Ding dong bell, plutonium in well. Who put it in? Politicians grin. Who'll get it out? Little green sprout. Uh, and uh, let's see here. Diddle diddle dumb thing. What went wrong? People went to sleep with the same old song. Both eyes shut, both ears closed. Diddle diddle dumb thing. Cows are all gone. <laughs> Uh, I have more, but you know, I don't want to take up everyone's time. Right? But, we'll, we'll loop back around. Okay. All right, great. If, uh, if anybody wants to pass uh, for whatever reason, be it, you know, you just want to pass or that you've uh, run out of uh, poems, uh, just let me know and we'll go on again. But uh, now we're going back to Brad. Yeah, it was... So I think I'll save this one for another time, but uh, so this poem I wrote uh, almost exactly three years ago now, uh, just a couple of days after I was diagnosed with um, uh, metastasized cancer. The poem is called Incurable, Lull Lullaby for Ego. Yeah, I know. Confusing, isn't it? Some time ago you were there and it was like that. And then you were like that over here, just like this. And what's it like now? Like a complaint from a TV commercial? Whatever happened to retirement? Manage and slow the spread, the best we can hope for. Eventual outcome, the only certainty. Everything else is an answerless mist, an unyielding fog. Lifetimes of the mind's blueprints, cobwebs in a forest fire. 
When is anything ever fully completed? Rats of impermanence gnawing at the footings of each new construction and stripping the wires off the engines themselves. And even the tenuous scaffolding is riddled with rot. Was there ever a final flag to drive into blowing sand? While titles and names and faces and achievements fall away faster than they arrived, when has becoming ever led to being? The tongue never quite reaches the taste. The beauty beheld always abandons the eye. Experience never sticks and stays, regardless of our clawing and grasping. The molecules of the body vibrating quicker than thought, some galaxies moving away at the speed of light. Moving where? Away from what? Silence and space between each instant, the very ground of every moment. No need to birth your head above the horizon's lip of unknowing and stillness. A divine ether flows in and flows out. Breath, of course, but so much more than that. When all the knots and bindings come loose, there remains the ceaseless ease of presence through the limitless peace of absence. Ooh. Thank you, Brad. Uh, let's go to Kevin. I wrote this uh, quite some time ago. It's called The Mind's Eye. Look into the mirror image of yourself. It is there you will see. Step through that doorway to your soul. Escape your body and be free. Probe the fathoms of all yesterday's dreams. It is there you will find all those forgotten answers you seem to have left behind. Your seconds turn into years, fond memories you greet with a sigh. We're all but a time passage in a mind's eye. In the mind's eye beyond freedom and dignity, like a dove, you can fly in infinite serenity. You only need to perceive and sense the pure insight. Here, you can never deceive yourself from true wrong or right. Journey to the inner fire, which burns as cold as ice. Here, unlock your emotions if you wish to pay the price. Search on for a reason. Strive towards the meaning of what makes you an individual being. Focus in on who you are, apart from all confusion. For the secret to your happiness is you. You are your own solution. Excellent. Uh, let's see here. I think we may have lost Hendal. And I think I have one of his... Uh, Somewhere handy here. Uh, he did that one. And I think he did that one also. Uh, okay, so I don't have one from Hangdahl. So if I could, I want to mention that uh, when we did this last time, uh, we ended up putting out an online magazine on issue, which is I-S-S-U-U. -S -S -U. And um, so if you could, whatever you've uh, read tonight, if, if you wouldn't mind it going out into the second uh, edition, um, you know, that'd be great. Just, just email it to me uh, and, you know, we'll get it in there for the, uh, for the next, um, installment. So um, that means we're moving on to Minui. Okay, so I, I shared with you guys my only personal poem that I wrote. Um, but I look around and I see we all have something in common. Um, and I think this um, enlightened 
uh, bikuni, uh, would have related a little bit to us. We don't have any women uh, with us tonight, but I'm going to represent the women just a little bit by reading a gata from the Terry gata. Um, and it goes like this. This was a enlightened uh, bhikkhuni at the time of the Buddha. So freed, so thoroughly freed I am. From three crooked, from three crooked things set free. From mortar, pestle, and crooked old husband. Having uprooted the craving that leads to becoming, I'm set free from aging and death. Okay. Uh, Robert, I'm going to ask a favor of you. Uh, yeah. And I know you've got them. So can you give us a, uh, a few of your works? Uh, because there's something I need to find. Oh, you mean I should uh, uh, read a few things? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I'll be back in a sec. Okay. Um, now I remember the future where everything has become calm. Now the future is empty, like a door that has opened to an empty room. Now the future is full again, full of bustling life and possibility. All the anticipation has burst through and created an ocean of activity on the cusp of the horizon of the dark edge of outer space. Here is the future you can easily fall into. Silence suddenly pervades and the darkness of the future lights up with an angelic smile. Is that the right amount of time? I have another one if you need it. No, give, give us another one or two. Okay. This is another uh, longish one, one page. Each of the old broken doors has its own special formula for opening. There is the broken door of the unhinged mind. There's the door of the heart swinging slightly open and then getting stuck. There's the door of the window longing for what is beyond. There are the six sense doors and the doors of the feet treading the earth. There are the insistent doors that keep slamming and reminding you of what happened. And the doors that open out onto a wide landscape where you are running and running, either for adventure or trying to get away. Then there are all the closed doors, the doors that used to be open or the ones that have always been shut, the proud etched doors that have detail work that they really don't make anymore. The plank doors that were thrown up in a commune and were perfectly fine and matched the old couch exactly well. There are doors that never got finished. They sit half open, half shellacked, partly painted, reminding you of unfinished tasks and parts of your world that are unseen, unknown, or undone, places that need repair. Sometimes those parts or places are not important enough to get any attention. Those places are sad. Then there are also destroyed doors, doors turned into tables, doors that have the knob in the wrong place. Every time you enter, you have to bend down. Doors that don't match their people are also sad. And sometimes when you go through a door, there's a new world on the other side. And sometimes you go through an invisible door and only discover it was there much, much later. All right. I found what I was looking for and <laughs> we'll get to it uh, shortly. So Russell, do you have another one for us? Sure. Empty words upon the page meaning lost, 
unkept through time. Littered thoughts of passing age, yielding naught but mindless rhyme. Meanderings of sound and form without purpose clear to view. No passion, fire, or even storm. What do they reveal to you? Study as you may, you see no hidden message or treasure true, just er ordered words, clear as can be, structured poem, yet message free. Thank you. <clears throat> um, okay, it, it dawned on me at one point that uh, there was actually something that uh, Sung San had written, this is from Bone of Space, if you can see that without too much glare on it. That's his uh, collection of poems. So this one is called Lumbini Garden, Buddha's Birthplace. In the heaven above and the heaven below, only I am holy. Brighter than sun, bigger than the universe. Swallowed time and space. Everything is meticulous and perfectly complete. Someone said before the Buddha was born, already saved all beings. But why so many suffering people here? All the pagodas are broken. Old Buddha's statue defaced. No eyes, no ears, no nose, no tongue, uh, no hands. <laughs> Sorry, force a habit. Uh, no eyes, no ears, no nose, no hands. Grass grows wild, no flowers. Is this Buddhism's primary point? Thailand, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, big temples. Many yellow monks, gray monks, dark monks. How do they know Buddha's nose? They only rub their own stomachs. Un Mun's shit stick has already broken all temples, killed all monks. Ha ha ha, I go, I go. No clothes, no shoes, no food. November 8th, 1980. So um, let's, uh, I guess we've looped around again. So we'll go to Scott Watson. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, let me bring this up here. Okay. Uh, this was called the essentials. What happens if we outgrow knowledge, like toys we played with, put away? Now here we are, not knowing, growing a ring of any tree. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Brad, do you have another for us? Yeah. So this is kind of about doors as well. One day you might find that you've been throwing your life against some invisible wall longer than you can remember. And on that day, a crack may appear in that wall you never knew existed. Because you stop looking, it comes into view. And just below the crack, you might notice a handle in this non-existent wall. And you realize there's a non-existent door in this wall that never was. This handle beckons for a turning. And this time you approach as one approaches things that may not be there with a curiosity, trust, and gentleness you've never known. And you turn with a turning born of endless endurance and the unshakable focus of a child in rapture. And then you realize it is not you turning, but you that is turned. For an instant, you recognize that you have not thrown yourself against anything. And perhaps for the first moment of your life, you have truly rested in your own presence. You find yourself bathed in an unspeakable radiance and smile while the world opens in a wide grin and whispers, 
Welcome home. Thank you. Uh, hey, Song, how about it? Out, either that or he's, the, the base runner is safe. Uh, A little bit of let's, both. Let's go to Minwi. Okay, I do have one last one. Uh, again, this is one of my favorites from the Terry Gatta, which is the collection of Gattas written by uh, the, the nuns at the time of the Buddha. And so this one is actually written by the Buddha's stepmother. Uh, as you may know, the Buddha's mother died shortly after his birth, very shortly after his birth. And uh, so his mother, Pajapati, I mean, his mother's sister, uh, raised him as her own. And this is, uh, this is her gatta uh, in reverence to her stepson. <coughs> Awakened, hero, homage to you, highest of all beings, you who've released me and many other people from suffering. I've comprehended all stress, dried up all craving, the cause, Develop the Eightfold Path and touch cessation. Before I was mother, son, father, brother, grandmother, not knowing things as they were, I wandered on without respite. But now that I've seen the Blessed One, this is my last body heap. Birth and wandering on are totally ended. There is now no further becoming. I see the disciples gathered, their persistence aroused, resolute, constant, in strong exertion. This is the worship of the Buddhas. Truly, for the benefit of many, did Maya give birth to Gotama, thrusting away the massive pain of those mired in illness and death. All right, I've got another one from Sung San. And this one is called Bodhgaya, which is uh, Buddha's enlightenment place. Once a great man sat, sat under the Bodhi tree, saw the Eastern star, got enlightenment. He absolutely believed his eyes. Sky is blue, ground is brown. And he believed his ears, nose, tongue, body, mind. Everything is complete and no hindrance. He became independent from time and space, attained freedom from life and death. So place of holy in the holy, one king made a high pagoda, but one king brought cow shit. Shit smell over the pagoda and the Bodhi tree, fills the country and the universe. Many, many begging hands, only boxes, only bones, sorry. When will they escape the cow's stomach? Bright light around, around from the west. Cow god, elephant god, monkey god, all gods are very frightened. Where are my horns, trunk and tail? When the wood chicken crows, you can find your original home. Phew! Cows dried shit on the wall. And so let's go to Robert. Um, this is a... Uh, 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 a broken line haiku. I don't know if you're allowed to do that or not. <laughs> I am the Zen dishwasher in a trance, swirling smooth water down drain. I have one other one if I can find it. Okay, you wanna, we'll come back to it then while you look unless you have it already. Should we, should we move on? Let's go to Russell while you, while you look. 
Um, this is a poet tries piece of Suzuki Roshi's writing. Um, Nirvana is not to be sought in the heavens, nor after departure from this earthly life, nor in the annihilation of human passions and aspirations. On the contrary, it must be sought in the midst of worldliness, as life with all its thrills of pain and pleasure is more, no more than nirvana itself. Excellent. Uh, Robert, did you find what you were looking for? Your mic is muted. I have I have a little haiku that I'll throw in. Um, resi it's really a sen ryu, technically, because it's not about nature. Resisting the grip of the forces of control, opening the door. Excellent, wonderful. Uh, how about going back up to Scott? Uh -huh. Okay, all right. Uh, I have one here. So for ancient Greeks, things as they, things as they are celebrate as they suffer things as they are. Sophocles noted birds still sing, but how do they do both at once? That's the how of how things are. That's it. Wonderful. Brad, do you have another one for us? Okay. Seems like another realm. I was still young and the old man was barely 50. When I said excitedly, I slipped on the razor's edge and cut my face off. And yet, ever since that long night of solitary brightness, I still tend to get real nervous around all nouns, names, and pronouns. Uh, okay, so I guess that means we're going down to, uh, we're coming into the final stretch here. <laughs> so uh, Minwi, do you have one more for us? And I Oh, I'm sorry, I can. I have a short one, a very short one. So uh, the Noble Eightfold Path is summarized in this short little gatta. To cease from evil, to do what is good, to cleanse one's mind. This is the advice of all the Buddhas. Wonderful. Uh, Robert, got another? Your mic is muted again. That's because my page is covering it, so I don't see it. Um, here's another uh, haiku. Nothing to do here, though the mind remains restless. Waves of the ocean. Another one, Russell? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to borrow some haiku from Ikyu. Hakujo Isan, names not yet still, wild fox body and water buffalo bull. No monks dwell in the former dynasty's old temples. Yellow leaves and autumn wind share the pavilion. Guess they're not haiku. I don't even think they could make it that short in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that Ikkyu, you know him. He's such an iconoclast. Uh, okay, uh, we'll wrap it up here with another one from uh, Sung San, and it's called Kushinagar, 
Buddha's nirvana place. Form is emptiness. Emptiness is form. A star appears in the Kapila Empire. 29 years old, into the mountains. 35 years old, got enlightenment. 45 years of teaching. 80 years old, died. Coming from where? Where do you go? Old stupa is brown and silent. No form, no emptiness. Great man dies. No one believes it. Maha Kashyapa walks around the coffin three times. Great feet appear through the coffin. Everything is surprised. Stone elephant jumps up to the clouds. Do you see the Buddha's face? Do you hear the coffin breaking? Form is form. Emptiness is emptiness. Gray monk asks yellow monk, Buddha's body has already disappeared. Where is the true Buddha? Yellow monk says, in everyone's heart. How do you prove that? Silence. If you ask me, I say to you, in front of the temple, Sal tree is green. So um, I appreciate everyone joining us for our special uh, Vesak, first annual Vesak Poetry Slam. Uh, hopefully there'll be many more to follow. And if uh, we can come up with any other appropriate holidays to uh, have a Poetry Slam for, uh, we'll do that. So um, let's just uh, finish things off the way we normally do. And uh... Life and death are of supreme importance. Time passes swiftly by and opportunities to awaken are easily lost. Strive to realize your true nature and do not squander your time by night or day. <laughs>